In a grimy underground facility, there's a vicious looking guy named Carter Ford who's covered in tats and seems to be the victor of the match. The crowd's going wild which makes him still feel just like a rock star, and throw punches like there's no tomorrow. In the meantime, there's a nervous woman named Frankie hovering around, seemingly looking for certain something or someone. She notices how Carter manages to knock out his rival and emerge victorious. You would be dead wrong to think Carter's our main guy in this movie. Emerging from the darkness a figure nonchalantly steps into the arena, totally oblivious to the odds against him. Even the arena's bouncer is dumbfounded, having zero faith in this new guy. The newcomer confidently takes his hood off and shows his shredded body. He's Elwood Dalton, a menacing former UFC world champion who's now become so desolated that he makes a living engaging in one-on-ones in fight clubs. This time however, he doesn't even break a sweat. Carter is scared out of his mind and forfeits the match while we hear him breaking the world record for using the F word. If you've enjoyed the video so far, feel free to show your support and give it a thumbs up. Or not. I can always try harder to get you to do it I guess. As a result Elwood wins all the bet money, leaving the crowd roaring in rage. After leaving the arena, Dalton is approached by a man in a back alley who apparently lost his profit with Elwood's unexpected entrance. Without any hesitation the man stabs Dalton. However, Dalton remains surprisingly calm and cool. You sure you thought this all the way through? His unexpected response startles the attacker, causing him to run for his life. Meanwhile Frankie walks outside to the back alley to find Elwood, only to discover him stabbed and bleeding. She offers a hand, but she's surprised to see Dalton treating this apparently lethal wound as if it's just a scratch. Frankie has good reasons to be here. She owns a roadhouse in Florida named The Roadhouse. The wrong crowd and clientele now ravage the property, and authorities have turned a blind eye to it, rendering her desperate to hire a good bouncer. While her original plan was to hire Carter, now with him out of the picture, she approaches Dalton with an offer. Five grand per week. He refuses on the spot, regardless of his financial struggles and Frankie's sales pitch. But Frankie leaves her number anyway. Elwood has the aura of a man who has reached the end of the line with nothing to lose. Perhaps it's a traumatic experience in the past. This melancholic demeanor becomes suicidal when he intentionally parks his car on a railway track. A train is approaching. The ominous sound of the train horning shrieks into the face of the night. Dalton is ready to meet his creator. However, in the last moment he suddenly changes his mind. He tries to start the engine but to no avail. The car won't budge. He tries again as the train is rapidly closing in the distance. Eventually the car starts moving but way too late. The train smashes into the car like a wrecking ball hitting a paper lantern, sending it spinning away like a piece of paper. Elwood hangs in there, not the one to give up that easily. This near-death experience however, makes him reflect and serves as a wake-up call, prompting him to seriously consider Frankie's offer. Upon his arrival in Florida Glass Key, Elwood has the expression of a person who's lost in space. Then this sweet kinda peculiar girl shows up and realizes he's a total stranger to these parts, so she hands him a guidebook to the area. Her name is Charlie, and she and her father Stephen, run the Glass Books bookstore together. This place becomes a quiet sanctuary for Elwood throughout the movie, awakening a long-forgotten sense of belonging in him. When he opens up that he's the new bouncer of the roadhouse, the expressions on Charlie and Stephen's faces change to concern. Stephen then gives Elwood the direction to the roadhouse and off our hero goes. Roadhouse is a sight to see, vibrant restaurant with bar-like characteristics, nestled right by the ocean, it ticks all the boxes to be a popular tourist spot. Elwood makes his way inside the establishment and is immediately recognized by a staff member Billy, who claims to be a big fan. Roadhouse only serves Cuban coffee, as Laura the bartender informs him. As he sits back enjoying his cup of coffee and reflecting on this newfound haven, he remarks on how peaceful this place is. But this tranquility is short-lived. With night comes a series of juvenile bar fights, which don't bother Elwood much. Billy is more than capable of defusing the situation. The real nemesis is discovered as a biker gang steps in, bringing chaos and tension and terrorizing the roadhouse. Elwood puts up with this vandalism and aggressive behavior by gang members until they cross the line by harassing Billy and a girl. Looking awfully composed and collected, Elwood tries convincing them to take this outside. When they pass Elwood heads towards their bikes, prompting them to leave on their own and follow the man. He politely asks them to leave, but they mockingly refuse, underestimating him due to their numbers. Interestingly, Elwood is rather reluctant to fight these guys as if he can foresee what's gonna happen. He even asks if there are any hospitals around. That's very generous for a bouncer. When they refuse again, he doesn't see any point in being verbal anymore. Now we get to see Elwood's impressive martial arts skills as he enjoys slapping the hell out of the gang members. The level of compassion he exhibits is unexpected for a man of his profession. Not only does he give a ride to the beaten gang members to the hospital, but he also goes the extra mile to warn them about street bumps. 
A doctor on duty named Ellie spots Elwood bleeding from the knife wound and offers to help. Elwood hesitantly agrees, allowing Ellie to patch him up with a bandage instead of stitching the wound. The chemistry between them is noticeable and they end up engaging in a heartfelt conversation, totally hitting it off. Back at the roadhouse, Frankie's real pleased with Elwood's performance and hands him his first paycheck in cash. They have a chat, and it turns out the roadhouse belonged to Frankie's uncle and it was his idea to call it the roadhouse. She then warns him about the crocodile hanging around the houseboat he chose to stay in. Frankie's uncle owned the boathouse as well, and he named it, the boat, following his unusual naming strategy. Little does Elwood know about the tragedies this houseboat makes him remember. The fierce-looking Elwood shows up at a UFC arena, totally different from before. They introduce him as Elwood Dalton, the challenger. Saved by the bell, he snaps back to reality when the benevolent Laura brings breakfast for their new bouncer. We then see Elwood's stature has grown in popularity since random people greet him on the street while he walks toward the Glass Books bookstore. He enjoys being in the bookstore, evident by his genuine smile. Elwood rushes to the porch when he senses some commotion outside that caught Charlie's attention. One of the thugs from last night and two other people are harassing the liquor store owner. Charlie tries to scare them off with a baseball bat, but they just laugh it off. However, as soon as Elwood steps foot outside, those troublemakers take off, then he has this deep chat with Charlie, and she pours her heart out about her mom passing away and how much the bookstore means to them, especially since it was her mother's idea in the first place. In the meantime, aboard a luxurious yacht cruising relentlessly on the ocean, the beaten up gang members are getting the attitude from Mr. B, the boss. Ben Brandt comes from a well-known family that played a significant role in the community's growth, but they're also infamous for their illegal drug activities. Now with his father out of the picture in prison, Ben's got his own big plans for the area. He aims to build a huge resort out west to attract lots of tourists. But there's a big obstacle in his way. The roadhouse. His original yet naive plan was to pressure Frankie into selling by using intimidation and fear. That's why he sent biker gangs to terrorize the roadhouse. A gang member goes on and tells him about what sort of person the new bouncer is. Then one of his own men suggests maybe it's time to get his old man involved. This vividly sets him off and he take it out on the captain, blaming him for the sudden movements that left him with a razor slash on his face. Things are looking good for Elwood, finally settling in and feeling at home, doing what he's good at. He also manages to make himself two sidekicks out of Billy and another guy named Reef, who help him handle those rowdy bar fights like pros. Turns out nightly brawls are not the only terrors of the night as Elwood wakes up panting from another recurring boat dream. The next day he runs into Ellie, the doc who patched him up the other day. Apart from exchanging playful banter, she takes the chance to warn him about the rough crowd in Glass Key. She tells him to be careful and avoid any trouble because things can get pretty heated up around there. But Elwood isn't phased one bit. He bids Ellie farewell by complimenting her hair. After receiving his second paycheck, Elwood makes his way back to his boathouse, crossing over the bridge. Out of nowhere, the glare of a car's headlights pierces through the darkness like a knife. In a breathtaking display of agility, Elwood dives and dodges with a dancer's grace, narrowly evading the truck's deadly path. This is no accident though. The truck tries to run him over again, forcing Elwood to dive into the river and swim to safety. But his relief is short-lived as he wearily trudges back to his boathouse, only to come face to face with a gun barrel. It turns out to be Dell, a defeated member of a gang sent by Brandt to take out Elwood. It seems like settling the score with Elwood is also a personal matter to him. Gunshots ring out in the night as they wrestle for control. Elwood lands a solid hit, throwing Dell overboard without realizing the danger of the lurking crocodile. Elwood has no intent of killing Dell. He tries to rescue him from the croc but to no avail. These undeserved escalations make Elwood realize how risky things are, prompting him to question Frankie about this whole roadhouse situation. She claims she doesn't know much about it, leaving Elwood skeptical. Later, he encounters one of Brant's henchmen who tries to intimidate him with a gun and bring him to Brant. In the blink of an eye, Elwood snaps the guy's index and middle fingers, making it clear that if Brant wants to see him, he's gotta come to Elwood himself. In the meantime, infuriated by the lack of resolve and practicality of his men, Brant receives a phone call from his dad, a call that he doesn't answer. Somebody threw him under the bus. Back at the boathouse, Elwood's uncertainty fades when Ellie unexpectedly shows up. As the day goes on, our protagonist finds himself enjoying her company more and more. Despite Elwood talking about his past in a gloomy way, their intimacy deepens with a kiss as they spend time together. When they reach the shore, Elwood gets summoned by the sheriff to answer a few questions about the crocodile incident, and Ellie anxiously watches. While Elwood is being taken away, we are introduced to our major antagonist, Knox, a psychopathic enforcer tasked by Brant's incarcerated father to hunt down Elwood Dalton, 
He's painted as an incredibly brutal mercenary with no care for the consequences of his actions, usually beating people with his bat, driving like a maniac, and even walking around naked in public. In the meantime, things are not looking good for Elwood himself. The sheriff goes on about how much he loves Glass Key and threatens Elwood to leave. However, when subjected to Elwood's sarcastic remarks, Sheriff resorts to more lethal means. Just in the nick of time, Ellie swoops in to save Elwood from the gun-wielding situation and gives the sheriff a good slap. Turns out she's the sheriff's daughter and spills the beans about her dad being in the same league with Brandt, urging Elwood to leave Glass Key for good. In the next scene, we see Elwood heading back to the roadhouse with none of his signature calm and composure. He looks uneasy and troubled. Later that night, Brandt decides to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with Elwood before he sets Knox loose. Taking a psychological approach, Brandt taunts Elwood about his past. He reminds Elwood of a UFC title match against his friend in which the young and ambitious Dalton was overcome by rage and killed his opponent, explaining Dalton's recurring dreams. Having received the green light, Knox arrives with some goons, and a full-blown bar fight ensues. Billy and Reef try to calm things down, but Knox is unstoppable and pandemonium reigns. Dalton however, seems distracted, absent-minded and detached. He only decides to act when Knox keeps calling out his name and challenges him to a fight. Their trash talk quickly escalates into a serious brawl, starting with Knox's headbutt. With every blow exchanged, the intensity of their struggle mounts. Knox seemingly has the upper hand as his fighting style is evidently more wild and aggressive. Eventually, badly beaten and feeling the pain of his wounds, Elwood decides to retreat. In the next scene, we can see Elwood packing his stuff while Frankie desperately tries to convince him to stay. She even comes clean about knowing Brandt's plan to wreck the roadhouse and build some fancy resort. In his last efforts, Frankie uses reverse psychology and tells him that they've scared him off. And Elwood responds with a meaningful answer. Yes, I am afraid. More than you could ever understand. Just in front of the bus stop he first arrived at, he sees the bookstore that has burned to ashes and learns that its owners are now hospitalized. This drastic incident gives Elwood the resolve he was missing. Now it's a personal matter for him. Elwood shows up at Brandt's place and faces off with one of his goons, the same guy who came up with the plan to burn down the bookstore. As Elwood gets closer, the guy tries to slash him open, but Elwood dodges and punches him in the throat. The guy's hyoid bone is broken, and he is struggling to breathe. While the man's wheezing goes on, Elwood finishes what he was saying earlier about being scared. I'm afraid of what happens when somebody pushes me too far, because I know what happens next. Watching Elwood's brutal fight makes it crystal clear what he's talking about. Then, he questions another goon who's shaking in his boots, and finds out about some big money headed Brant's way. Elwood finds the deputy in charge of the cash, grabs it from him and gives him a good whack, thinking he's wiped his short-term memory. But then the sheriff rolls up on Elwood, who's apparently preparing some dynamites. The sheriff asks him to save Ellie, whom Brant has kidnapped, and to return the money he took to set her free. Meanwhile, Knox is looking for Brant and fails to find him at his establishment. Upon reaching Brant's boat, Elwood is not surprised to see Sheriff and Brant sitting next to each other like partners, he even sarcastically comments that he knows nothing about the money. It turns out that Ellie was never meant to be taken hostage in the first place, and the Sheriff becomes furious when he realizes that Brant has double-crossed him and actually taken her hostage. Now as things escalate to a dangerous point, Elwood detonates the bomb implanted in his boat, causing havoc and chaos. He then starts an all-out search for Ellie, managing to escape the sinking boat together, Elwood urges Ellie to swim to safety while he keeps pursuers at bay. Unfortunately, Brant cunningly captures Ellie on another boat and makes his escape. Out of nowhere, our crazy antagonist finds his way to this final showdown. He tries to hit Elwood with the boat several times, but he's able to cling to it and climb aboard, finally turning the table and throwing Knox into the water. On the other hand, Brant makes the worst decision to crash the two boats together. In a heart-pounding moment, the tension reaches a boiling point when Elwood makes a dramatic leap into Brant's boat, sending his own boat to the bottom. Ellie and Elwood jump off the boat in a nick of time, leaving Brant and his boat crashing into the roadhouse. At the roadhouse, Elwood realizes the extent of destruction caused by his actions. Brant has wondrously survived the accident and hastily attacks Elwood, but Elwood easily overpowers him. For a moment we think that it's all over. This fantasy is well shattered when Knox shows up, ramming a car into the roadhouse. Despite his injuries Elwood bravely faces Knox, determined to put an end to this once and for all. The fight intensifies with both parties fiercely retaliating each blow. Knox and Elwood exchange blows with unwavering determination and lightning speed. As the battle wore on, Elwood starts to feel tired and is caught off guard, getting pinned down by Knox. Spiteful Knox then stabs him in the gut with a wooden stick, cold-bloodedly taking out Brant too. 
Lying in pain and anguish on the ground, Elwood refuses to die. He makes a dramatic comeback when he draws the wooden stick out of his punctured body and stabs Knox rapidly. He drops dead on the spot. Breathing heavily and drenched in sweat, he stands victorious over his defeated opponent. This is where Elwood realizes the presence of Sheriff and his daughter. The Sheriff offers to take care of the situation, as long as Elwood agrees to leave. Despite the roadhouse being a total mess, it can be fixed with the right effort. Charlie was the first to welcome Elwood, and now she's the last to say goodbye. And yes, he leaves all the money he took from Brant for the father and daughter. Looks like there's another twist to the story as we can see Knox is still alive in the post credit scenes, adding chaos as he storms out of the hospital and causing the blur effect to come back into play. That's all for today's video, I hope you found the recap interesting. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.